The Women's Christian Temperance Union was founded in 1874, but it was through the leadership of its second president, Frances Willard, that it became the largest of all 19th century women's movements. Frances gave up a successful teaching career to lead the union for nearly two decades, but temperance was only the open door for other services. It was said, her blue eyes gleamed on behind her beribboned nose glasses as she spoke on behalf of suffrage, vocational training for women, child care and child labor laws, and prison reform. Now the group's motto was, for God and home and native land. Meetings were conducted like church prayer meetings, and the rooms were decorated with velvet and flowers. As described by Willard, they were as cozy and delightful as a parlor. Now Willard encouraged members to use their traditional needlework skills to promote and fund the causes of the WCTU. And quilts became banners and flags carried in the crusade. Blue and white were the union's colors. White for purity and blue for water, the purest beverage of all. And the drunkard's path quilt was a popular symbol with the organization. Drunkard's Path quilts and turkey red and white were also very common. Now for temperance, they also pieced the double T block. Ooh, it's very interesting in reproduction fabrics. And then another block was called the WCTU block. Its members were primarily Protestant and especially Methodist. They were middle and working class women with previous experience in missionary work and in the Sanitary Commission. Well, at the Chicago World's Columbian Exposition in 1893, Frances was honored as one of the four most respected and influential women of the 19th century. For her warmth, humor, and charisma, I dedicate our next star to Frances Willard. Now this one is just beautiful in Victorian colors, and it was made by Anita Hester. Now there's a number of miters in this quilt, but you'll love the easy technique. And then flying geese pieces complete the star and the border treatment. Frances was so respected, she went on to become president of the world WCTU. So let's just jump on her bandwagon and get this block done. I'm proud to add Frances Willard to my gallery of stars. Well, women rallied to her cry, do everything. Now, when you make a quilt exactly like this one, and you do all of these miters, when you do the miter in the center of the block, and then the miters around the four blocks, and then up here, if you make the flying geese and put miters here, by the time you're done, you will have done 64 miters. Now, that is enough to drive anybody to drink but I have an easy way to show you on that miter. Now it starts off from strips and squares. That center square is three and a half inches. And then the strips on either side, you need to have two different shades, a medium and a dark. And they are all four cut at two and a fourth inches by seven and a half inches. Now on a miter, that quarter inch is so important. So I'm marking it carefully right from the start. I, I took a dark marker just so you could see it, and I already have three of those dots on. This is how I did it. Just take a ruler that has quarter inch markings on it and line it right up in the corner and then put your dot. Now we're gonna keep an eye on those quarter inch points the whole time. Now, go ahead and take these pieces, take the strips. You're gonna sew them on all four sides. So get them lined up like this right from the beginning. And I'm just gonna take this piece right here and slip it right on. And then once you've got it on there, make sure you center it. That's pretty critical too. Get it centered and if you want, take a pin, oh, lemon flavored, how about that? And stick it right through the dot quarter inch dot there and then down and the opposite end. 
And that's the beginning point. Now I have a stitch on my machine that actually locks it in the beginning and then goes forward. So just drop your foot and I'm going to drop my needle in and then when I start forward it's just going to take a couple of locking stitches and then go forward. And then when it gets right down here at the bottom, let's slow down because just before it I want to lock again and then stop and raise that needle up out of there and stop it. Okay, looking good. So I've gone from dot to dot very carefully. Let me just clip those threads so that you can see it. That's the starting point from the miter. Let's look at it from the back side too. Now, once you have that first step done, carefully fold everything back out of the way. You don't want to have any of your strips in position right here. So take this and put the second side on. Let's move it around, center it right on there, make it equal on both sides. Go ahead and put a pin right through here and then a pin on the opposite side. Let me line that up. Right here is where you want to keep all of your seams out of the way. Okay, same thing. Quarter inch, lock it if you want to, right in the beginning, needle down, lock it in place, and then so forward. Ooh, where's that stiletto? That's going to help me keep that nice and straight. And then just before that, if you want to lock it, lock it in place, and then stop it, bring the needle right out. Okay, trim it. And that's it. You've got the basics for that miter. So let me just keep on. I'm going to open this up, fold everything out of the way, and just add these other two strips onto it. And while I add them on, I'm going to tell you about Frances Willard. Oh, as a little girl. Well, nobody was really surprised that she ended up doing all those great things, but she was a tomboy. Oh, she'd rather have short hair, wear some pants and play outside, build things. She loved to build. She'd rather build than work on her sampler. Do you know it took her five years to sew her sampler as a little girl because she'd rather just sit inside make a flag or something like that to fly at the parade then, then um, work on her sampler. When she went into her adolescent years, her mother said, Francis, it's time to make some changes. Well, her first thought was to steal her father's gun, steal a canoe and just run away, but she stuck it out. Her mother put 16 hairpins in her hair, pulled it back, made it hurt, had her wear a dress, she said she was never going to climb a fence again. There, let me get this one lined up. Just two more points. Everything's out of the way, and this is that last step. Well, when her brothers went off to vote, boy, she watched them go out that door, and her, sister, her sister said, oh, Francis, don't say anything. If you say anything, they're going to say that we're strong-willed. So she kept her mouth quiet. They went off to vote, and actually, she did get to play again because when she was 53 years old, she learned how to ride a bike. She said, oh, I think it would be good for a husband and wife to have that in common. Okay, that's good. All around, it's loose on the corners. Now, I'm just going to change my threads and then I'll show you the rest. I put in some yellow thread so you can see it as soon as I mark on this red piece. Now take this and actually fold it corner to corner on the diagonal. And right here, line up these strips so that you have the edges right here match and then finger press this seam up. Oh, looking good. Now, once you've got that up out of the way right here, fold that up straight, then find the 45 degree line on your ruler. And I'm just going to flip this over. Whoops, I did have it right. Well, I'll get it right here. Okay, line up that 45 degree line across the bottom of the strip and then also put it right on that dot, right on that tip we had right there. And also line the ruler with the edge of this, the square underneath. Now, once that's perfectly lined up, take a marker from that quarter inch dot and mark it straight out. And then to secure that, you can go ahead and just put a pin right through there. And our stitching is going to start right here. You want to make sure you don't overlap that any. Now let's see how, I, how good I can do with this. Okay, let's just drop that 
needle right in there. And actually now I have my needle centered. So drop in the needle and you're gonna stitch right on that line. And I put in that yellow thread now. You'll see that coming right along there. And now when you get out to the end, use the locking stitch. Actually, some people like to go ahead and not do any locking because if they need to take out a stitch or two, then it's easier to do. Now, let's look and see. See how that goes right along there? From right here, you've got that stitching going straight out. Cut these threads. Let's take a look from the opposite side. Maybe I better take a look first. Oh, it's looking pretty good. Okay, so that comes right out there and that's going to lay nice and flat. Now all you have to do is sew all four sides and then press them open. And I prefer, prefer to just lay them flat, take the iron right down in through the miter, lay that open and flat, and then once the miter is pressed, then go to the square and just press that flat too. Oh, looking good. Now, if you could do all 64 miters like that, you'd be doing great. Now, go ahead once you've got that pressed open. I find it easier to press it open. Trim this away. Get rid of this little piece right there. And then it's all flat in the back side. Well, I have one that I already did. And it's all set. All that pressing done from the center out right on those stitches. This piece is squared up to six and a half inches. So just take a 12 and a half inch square up ruler, line up that diagonal line right down through the middle of those seams. And let's see, right here, I've got my six and a half, got six and a half right on that diagonal. Oh, that is looking good. So once you've got that, so that six and a half are on each one of those sides, just trim it up and over on two sides and then go ahead, turn it to the two remaining sides and put the right, the outside edges of the square up exactly at six and a half inches up and over. Well, at least the first miter is done. That's looking good. The points of the star are from the flying geese patches and that's the technique where you have two squares for four geese. Now the two squares are seven and a half inch and nine inch. And you center the smaller square, the background square, the seven and a half inch right in the center of the nine inch. Then draw a diagonal line and then sew a quarter inch on both sides of the diagonal line. And then just go ahead and use your ruler, cut that right down on the diagonal and then press those seams regardless of color right now towards the largest triangle. And on these two, it is going to go towards the dark. And then after you've got those pressed, then take these two pieces that are odd shaped and place them right sides together, this time matching them in opposite corners, dark on this side, dark on this side. Now the border pieces are identical in technique, but they come from two different sizes. Those come from five and a half and seven inch squares. So you'll get that already started for the border. Now, once you've gone and pressed these right sides together, draw another diagonal line and sew on both sides of it. One more cut right down through that middle. And then once you cut it, you have a point right here in between the two seams. Here's one seam here, one seam here, that you wanna just take a pair of scissors and just clip it right in towards that seam. Because now that you have that clipped, you can press it flat. So just drop it with the, wrong, with the right side down. And I like to just go right in here on the background, little seam here, and then just turn it around on the opposite side and press. And I always like to check it because sometimes you get those little tucks right on this side, go back in there as well. Now, from this piece come those two geese. So take your uh, six by 12 ruler right now because it has a quarter inch line on it and line it up so that the quarter inch line is right off that tip, right up here. And go ahead and look, you can see that it's square. Let's see if I flip this over, then I can go ahead and have the 45 on that as well. All right, 45 here, quarter inch here, little bit more than three and a half down here. And then just cut that in half. And then once you take that one aside and you repeat that same step 
on the opposite side, you actually cut this little section right out in the middle. That's your little safety right there. Now I like to switch rulers, go from the 6 by 12 to the 12 and a half inch square up ruler and turn the piece so that actually the background, that V in the background is facing you so that you can drop that diagonal line right down through there and at this time line it up so three and a half inches here, six and a half inches right here in this corner. Okay, perfect. Three and a half here, six and a half here, little extra piece hanging out on the side. Trim that away and then once you have that trimmed, just turn it around and trim one more side. You should have six and a half here, three and a half here. Trim it. You're going to have four great geese. Now when you're doing the border pieces, you're going to square those up to two and a half by four and a half. Now the center piece is done right here. The miter got four great points for the star. Those go right around the edge like this and always have that dark turned right in there. It doesn't really matter now how these points are going to go. Um, if you're going to have the medium of the miter going out or whatever because as you turn it around it'll be all the same. Okay, four points and four three and a half inch background squares. Same on all of the blocks go off of these corners right now. So let me drop that in there and now we're going to do vertical rows going right down through. Got those points right out there so just take this and flip it right sides together. We're just going to sew continuously right down along there. Use your locking stitch if you'd like. Let me just stack these from top to bottom. So I have this nice tidy stack all set to go. You know, whenever you line this up, make sure that you anchor that right in the beginning. That corner has to be perfect. Quarter inch seam, anchor it right there and then match the opposite edge right here. I'm looking for my stiletto. Where did it go? Oh, got to have that handy all the time. And then as soon as you have that one done, this has a bit of a critical part to match right here. You want to keep that flat, straight, match that edge right here and fit it right through and then just keep on going right down, match the opposite edge here. You know, the Women's Christian Temperance Union was such an organized group. But there was one woman, oh, by the name of Carrie Nation. She went a little wild at times. She was like a six-foot-tall woman, really not part of the nice, calm ladies that, that marched with the Women's Christian Temperance Union. Boy, she would get into those saloons with her axe, cause a lot of damage, just breaking up the saloons, breaking up the bars. Nobody wanted to see Carrie Nation come by. Okay, now once I've got that one row in, let me look and see. Okay, looking great. Got a perfect point right there. It's going to work well. Now all I need to do is just take this row right here, flip it on, sew right down, and then go back across the other way. And this time I'm going to push my seams so that here they go away from the geese and then towards that center square. Make that all matched up block will be great. Not much sewing to do. Now that I've practiced on the red, white, and blue block, I can go ahead and do those 64 miters on the quilt. Now I already made the four star blocks and they are also mitered. Now whenever you miter them, take a look at the fabrics in the center block because coming right off of here, the burgundy put on miters that are two and a half inches by 18 inches long on this side, two sides, and then up here on the opposite corner, you're going to be using that pink as well. Get them mitered and then don't set them together quite yet, but when you do, take and turn them so that you have two of the darks going into the center point and then on the opposite corners, the two darks pointing out, oh, you'll have a great swirling effect. Now the flying geese come from those pieces that are five and a half inches and seven inches. Now of the dark one right here, the dark green, you need to make eight sets so you end up with 32 geese. Of this set, you need to have six of them, six sets for 24 geese. After you get all your sewing and your cutting done, go ahead and sew those into pairs and then you line up 
you have three pairs in a row like this plus one more geese right in the end. You need to make a series of eight of those. Once you have all eight done, ooh, this is getting good, you're going to take them and turn them in opposite directions with more miters right in the center, a smaller piece of miter. Now is the time to find out what you have to do with these blocks. Once you sew these together, lay it down here, match it up. You see that it's going to match it up right here. Now you might find out that you need to do a little squaring on that block just to make this geese border fit on this side. So once you square up those blocks, sew your top together and add these pieces to opposite sides. Now that little mitered block, ooh, that's a fun one. It's right down here. It comes from a two and a half inch square. And then the four strips are each one one and a half inches by six inches. You've got to make eight of those. More mitering. Make eight. And then for the top and the bottom rows, all you're going to do is sew pairs of geese together with a mitered block right in the middle and then one on each end. Let's see if we can move this aside and just see how it's all going to fit. Oh, actually, it might sound complicated, but it goes quite easy. Now, whenever you put these on, you're going to make sure that you match this up, get that centered right out, right down here, and then as well, this is just going to come right into this corner, be a great finish. Love the way the Victorian colors are coming together. Well, the Congress of the United States broke all precedent and suspended its regular proceedings to dedicate the statue of Frances Willer. Do you believe that? A woman honored equally by the men of the nation's government. And it's the only woman in Statuary Hall. Pretty amazing, isn't it? Well, I'll be pretty amazed if I get this top sewn together. This top turned out beautiful in these Victorian colors. It's a real tribute to Frances Willard. The WCTU attracted ordinary women who had never joined a cause to protect the home from the destruction of alcoholism. Now besides the drunkard's path, another of their patterns was the goblet. Now turned one way, the image looks like a whiskey bottle, but wait. Turn the block upside down and the bottle becomes a goblet full of pure blue water. Well, many of the members would recite, lips that touch whiskey are lips that will never touch mine. Women's Christian Temperance Union. Well, although liquor was illegal in many counties, it was possible to get a drink through a doctor's prescription or by registering with a druggist. Old granddad whiskey unexcelled for medicinal purposes. Well, some men made several trips a day to the druggist, signing false names for each drink and listing the particular ailment that would be aided by a shot of whiskey. Average adult dose, one tablespoon three times a day, and it helped to treat influenza, colds, bronchitis, fevers. It was for exhaustion due to mental or bodily overwork, and it has no equal in the treatment of the various menstrual disorders. Well, local women saw to it that there was a WCTU booth at every state and county fair. Now, this is an excellent example of a quilt displayed in their booth the double T for temperance. Now the fabrics of the quilt show a good selection of reds. Now some of them have faded more than others. And this block has a patch that's reversed. Now perhaps that's the quilter's shame block. Boy, we can get one of those easy enough. And the triple diagonal line of hand quilting is typical of that period. Well, what a treat that Diane Ferguson shared this quilt with us. The 10 cent signature quilt was also widely used as a fundraiser. Individuals donated money to have their signature on the quilt and depending on the position the name occupied, they paid two cents to 50 cents and then later the finished quilt was sold or raffled. Frances Willard knew that temperance was not the main issue. She motivated WSCTU members to confront many other social problems quoting her own words. She loved her homemakers and housekeepers who generously gave scraps and fragments of their time 
to the important work of reform. Remember one of the best loved women in America as you work on the Frances Willard Star.